Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to give you an introduction to the Nick Collection 5. For those of you not familiar with the Nick Collection, it's a set of eight different applications for photo processing. Now, the Nick Collection has a really long history. As a matter of fact, I believe some of these applications that are in the Nick Collection were amongst the first applications that worked as plugins in Photoshop and Lightroom. And over the years, the Nick Collection has changed and matured quite a bit. Now, they still work as plugins in Photoshop and Lightroom, but they also work as standalone applications and they work as plugins in Photoshop Elements, DxO Photo Lab, and Affinity Photo. Now, I mentioned that there are eight different apps in the collection. Amongst them are Analog Effects Pro 3. If you have an image and you want to give it that classic film look, this is the app you would use for that. Next to that, I have Color Effects Pro 5. This app allows you to add various effects to an image that affect the color tone and contrast of that image. Next to that, we have Define 2. This is the noise reduction application in the collection. Next to that, we have HDR Effects Pro 2. As the name implies, this is the HDR app. Next to that, we have Perspective Effects. This app will allow you to correct any geometric distortions introduced by the lens. Now, the next two apps are really one app, uh, Sharpener Pro 3 Raw Pre-Sharpener and Sharpener Pro 3 Output Sharpening. As the name implies, these are the apps used for sharpening. Over here in the lower left, I have Silver Effects Pro 3. This is the app for black and white images. And next to that, we have the Vesa 3. This is the app for color images. Now, I mentioned that I'm giving you an introduction to the Nick Collection 5. Today, I'm just going to use probably my favorite app for black and white photography, and that is Silver Effects Pro 3. In future videos, I'll go over some of the other apps that are in the collection, and I'll specifically in those videos talk about some of the new features found in this, the Nick Collection 5. Now today, I am going to be using it as a Lightroom plugin just because it's easier to show you before and after. It's basically the before color image here. And all I really did to it in Lightroom is basic processing. I didn't do anything else. I didn't do any masking or anything. Now, of course, I could use Lightroom to convert this to black and white. I just click right there. But it's really kind of rudimentary. I could convert it to black and white and I could go to the black and white mix and change the black and white mix, but there's not a lot more I could do to the image as far as black and white is concerned. You'll see once I bring it over into Silver Effects Pro 3 that it will really help us get a very, very interesting black and white image. So I'm going to right click right on the image and we're going to go down to Edit In and then over and down to Silver Effects Pro 3. Now, I mentioned that these apps do work as standalone applications, and when you use them as standalone applications, you can work on raw files directly. There is a limitation with Lightroom. Lightroom will not allow you to send any raw file directly into any plugin, including SilverFX Pro 3. So you have to send either a TIFF file, PSD file, or a JPEG. By default, they're asking for a TIFF file and these default settings, and that's what we'll do. So I'll click at it. You can see in the top left hand corner there's a progress bar. Lightroom is creating that TIFF file with those specifications and it will open it up into SilverFX Pro 3. And you'll notice as soon as it opens up in SilverFX Pro 3, it'll be black and white. That is not Lightroom making it black and white. That is SilverFX Pro 3 just applying this neutral preset to it. That's this one. And that's pretty much the same black and white processing that you would get in Lightroom when you convert it to black and white there. You could see it's really not very exciting. Now, SilverFX Pro 3 and most of these apps that are in the Nick Collection have a lot, a lot of functionality. There are a lot of controls, a lot of sliders. And you could find yourself going down a rabbit hole you don't want to go down if you just start moving sliders around. So what I strongly recommend you do is you find a preset, because most of these apps or all these apps have presets, find a preset that works for you, that looks close to what you want, and then come over and just touch up the sliders to get what you want. 
you'll find that it will be much more easier in the long run. Now, as you can see, as far as SilverFX Pro 3 is, is concerned, there's 64 presets built in. You can, of course, create your own presets as well. And what I do is I just page through uh, the different thumbnails here, looking at each of the presets, and I click on one that might interest me. I contrast smooth. I contrast harsh. I kind of like that one. There's high structure smooth. That one's okay too. And for the sake of this video, I'm not going to go... Um, go through all of these, but you can see that there are a lot of different types of presets. Now again, something here might not be exactly what you want, but I think in my case, high structure harsh is close to what I want. So that looks pretty decent. And I might add, I'm just gonna go back to just the neutral adjustment here. This is what we would have got in Lightroom. And you can see that there's a considerable difference between those two. Now. There are a lot of sliders here. Now there's global adjustments and local adjustments. So uh, by at first, if you look, you could see right here, there's global adjustments. I could affect, let's say, the brightness of every pixel in the image. I could affect highlights, midtones, shadows, dynamic contrast, and so on. There's contrast adjustments in different things here. Now for this specific image, I want to make the sky a bit more dramatic. So I'm gonna to go to structure adjustment highlights. You can see the preset has that at zero. I'm gonna move that up a little bit. You can see what it's doing there. And I think that looks pretty good. Now I come back and maybe I'll just add a bit more contrast to the image. Maybe not that much, just a little. So you can see how this preset got me pretty close to what I want and then I could come in here and just kind of dress it up a little more the way I want to. I think that looks pretty good. Now these are global adjustments. All the sliders I just moved affect every single pixel pretty much equally in the image. But there are selective adjustments. If we go down here and we roll this open, you can see there's something called control points. Control points are unique to the NIC collection and they've been around from the early days of the NIC collection. What a control point is, is you would put this over a part of the image. It could be the sky, it could be a building, it could be a person even, it could be anything. And what it will do is it will look at what is below that button that you placed or that pin that you put down. And that is a specific type of tone, uh, color, and uh, contrast texture under that button. And then any adjustments you would do, it will try to only affect that tone, texture, and color that are within that control point. Let me show you, I have the control point turned on. No, I don't, I'll click on it. Now it's turned on, you can see my cursor is this little like donut. Let's just click right on the lighthouse right here. And you can see we have this circle. So this circle encompasses all the place or everywhere that the adjustment will affect, but it will try to affect the tone texture and color that is directly under the pin that I put down. Now, what I recommend, it's not perfect, so it will kind of bleed off onto the sky. So what I recommend you do is just kind of make it so it fits what you want, and it will go a bit outside of the circle as well. So um, you know, try to keep it pretty much on what you want adjusted, like the bricks of the lighthouse. And as far as that is concerned, I want to add some structure there, maybe some fine structure as well to those bricks. Now it's adding them to the bottom part of the bricks. Let me add some more. Maybe even add a little contrast. Because that's where the control point is. So it's affecting these bricks in here, but not these up here. So I want to affect those up there as well. So what I could do is I could create another control point, but I really want just an exact duplicate of this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the Option key in, in my Mac. It would be an Alt key in a PC. Just click on this little button in the middle and I could drag another one out. You can see how it affects those. And then I'll affect the size. So it only affects what I want it to affect. I'll do it again. So I'll just build these right up the lighthouse like that. I think that's pretty good. So they all have the same exact adjustment and they're adjusting pretty much just the lighthouse. So I like what I did here. There's a lot more though we could do. There's something called clear view. If you have an image that has some fog or haze, clear view will help get you rid of that or get rid of that hog, uh, phase and uh, fog. 
Uh, it is new in uh, this, the fifth edition of the Nick collection. And there's color filters, there's film types we could do, film grain, and a lot of different other adjustments. But I really like what I did here. And again, it was pretty simple. I just picked a preset and I moved maybe six or seven sliders to get to this point. And because I'm using it as a plugin in Lightroom, all I need to do is click apply. I would like to add one more thing. If you click this box right here, non-destructive edits, larger files, what this means is when I save this and it returns us to Lightroom, if I want to go back in and re-edit anything, all these sliders and the control points will still be there. If I don't check that box, it will give me a smaller file, but it will obliterate all the adjustments I just did. So uh, I'd basically be uh, just continuing on from that point and I won't be able to re-edit anything that I previously did. I usually like to check that box. I have pretty large hard drive, so I'm not worried about file size. So I'll click apply. You can see that it will process the image and it will bring us back into Lightroom because I did use it as a Lightroom plugin. Now I mentioned that it does work as a plugin in um, Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, DxO Photo Lab, and Affinity Photo. If you guys want me to demo any of the applications that are in the Nick collection as a plugin in any of those apps except Photoshop Elements, because I don't own Photoshop Elements, but I do own all the other apps. If you would like me to demo it in any of those apps, let me know, and I'll see if I could do a video on it. Now, one thing I have noticed um, with Lightroom lately, when you're using plugins, a lot of times it won't update right away, and you can see we still have our color image here. So what I do is you kind of click off it and then click on it, and then you'll get sometimes these three lines with the up arrow, kind of this little postcard thing over here in the, in the um, thumbnail. Let me make that bigger. You can see that. What you need to do is click on that and then pick the middle choice, import settings from disk. What that means is Lightroom in its catalog has a set of metadata that it has written for this file. And of course the Nick collection or really any plugin, because this happens with Topaz Labs and all the other plugins with Lightroom often, is that those applications wrote data to the, you know, to the file. And what is happening is Lightroom doesn't know which metadata to use, its own that's in its catalog or the metadata that was from the plugin. We want to import settings from disk. That is the metadata from the plugin. So we'll do that. You can see now we have our black and white image. You may get this again. You could just ignore it. Sometimes if you open and close Lightroom, that will go away. But there's our black and white image. And here is our original color image. And again, if I just go to black and white, you can see there's a quite Quite a big difference there. So that is just a brief, brief introduction to the Nick Collection 5. Again, I'm going to be doing probably my very next video. Um, I'll use one of the other apps that are in the collection, but I'll talk more about the specific new features found in this, the fifth edition of the Nick Collection. Again, if you have any suggestions on videos you want me to make, including what um, application to use these as a plugin in, let me know in the comments below. I also have links to their website and you can check it out. I believe they have a fully working free trial that you could try before you buy. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.